everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 50 of the cloud computing training show with brad nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader david linthicum this show is sponsored by nelson hilliard cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud iot fintech and ai in this week's show david and i are talking about that india is expected to see more than a million cloud computing job roles by 2022 as more organizations shift their operations to the cloud hi dave we've reached the big 50 training show and it's great to have you still on <laughs> it's great it's great to be here congratulations on 50 well thank you very much and congratulations to you sir as you are a big part of this show <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, you know, an opening question then is, how do you see India being able to scale uh, their cloud computing training? Yeah, I think this is going to be a big, a big issue for them coming forward. I mean, it's it's funny in India when I was there, um, you know, three or four months ago, is a unique country because they are so tech technologically focused. I remember, uh, you know, seeing on the side of a taxi cab uh, Hadoop training and AWS training and you know things like that so things you probably wouldn't see in the states um you do see it in, you know if you're you're going to go you know talk to a, a a skills company or training company but it's you know such a widespread kind of a popular culture that we're going to in essence learn technology because i understand they can convert that directly into a career and convert that directly into a well-paying job and so suddenly we have this huge pent up demand for cloud skills that are in India because they're not here in the States. We're running into, you know, um, huge barriers to the fact we can't hire as quickly as we need to hire. We're looking for India to, and the Indian based companies to, in essence, you know, scale up, you know, to leverage some of those jobs, just like they have in the past with, you know, Java development and DevOps and Python based systems and, you know, MySQL and, and LAMP stack, things like that, then commodity things we can outsource. But they're not going to have the capability of doing that if they can't train up uh, by the time we need these skills. So they do have the college educated people, the smart people, their ability to, in essence, convert those people into cloud people, you know, in other words, a technical person into a cloud based skill set is going to be the biggest challenge going forward because they you know they can in essence print money be all the dollars that are going to flow out you know flow from all over the world in India they're looking for these skill sets that can find them that's the big thing and hire them at a reasonable price you know more reasonable than they can in the states and the european countries and things like that so this is the challenge and it's going to be interesting to see if india is going to be able to scale up as quickly as they need to scale up if the ability to train them is going to provide them with the quality people that we need to, in essence, do the jobs we're looking to outsource to, they've done an excellent job in the past, will that be able to continue? And also the big cloud providers, the big three, you know, are they going to be able to invest in some of the skills-based systems in India as well? They're doing so in the States with the you know, community college thing we talked about and you know, sponsoring courses and things like that and having these boot camps. But, you know, will they be able to work with, you know, um, uh, training companies and video training companies in India to, in essence, build up that workforce, you know, to get them ready for the cloud? So it's going to be a huge experiment as far as I can tell. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the, the actual Indian cloud computing market has been reported at, at currently at about 2.2 billion US dollars. And, and I believe that's expected to, to grow to about 4 billion by 2020. So, you know, the growth rate, I think, is around the 30 percent mark or, or so. Um, and, and there's a, an estimated uh, 1 million new jobs created in India around the cloud market. So with a focus around DevOps and, you know, SaaS and, uh, and, and things like that. So it's... Um, yeah, I think there are challenging times. It'd be interesting to see how they, they move into India from a training point of view. Who do you think is going to the lead, lead the way? Do you think it'll be the, the big players like AWS or do you, do you see Alibaba stepping into to India, although mainly domineering you know, China or something? What, what are your thoughts on that? Who's going to be the main, the main person to make that leap of faith? Yeah, I do see some Chinese investments and Alibaba's definitely going to be in there, but I think that um, you know the big the big companies probably already have sites there AWS I'm sure and Azure and you know Microsoft and and Google and uh, Alibaba I'm sure IBM has sites in there they already have investments in those com in those countries by the way so their ability to kind of scale those investments up to focus on in essence building a workflow force or transforming a workforce which you know currently 
is not going to be able to meet the expectations of the growing market. I mean, 30% growth in two years, they're saying by 2020, that's a hell of a, that's a hell of a lot of uh, money that's going to flow into India, and they have to have the, the skills, in essence, to build them. So they're um, you know, kind of a service-based economy when it comes to technical skills. And so if they don't have people trained up, they're not going to be able to take advantage of it. And eventually, you know, this is very much like... Um, it's a bell curve. You know, we're at the bottom of it right now, but eventually we'll get to the top of it and eventually it kind of goes away into another technology and say this is a run for the next, you know, seven to 10 years. They need to scale up right now to go ahead and take advantage of it. And I think that uh, big companies in the States, you know, chomping in the bit, you know, looking at India to in essence save them, provide them with the skill sets they need to kind of take things to the next level, you know, both from the economy of it, but also the ability just to find the people, and I and they're normally the release relief valve in the uh, in the states when it comes to an essence and skills, and so they need to be able to play this role. I just don't see a path to increase these skill sets by thirty percent in the next two years unless they kind of move as more quicker than everybody else has in the, in the world. And uh, we'll see if they can make it happen. But my um, I don't have high expectations they're going to make that happen. Yeah, so true, and it begs the question: How much of a, an outsourced resource is uh, India going to become to the the U.S. cloud economy? Doesn't it to fill that 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 gap, that skill shortage that the whole world has uh, has, has certainly felt with regards to the the highly skilled cloud individuals that are needed? I think it's uh, one of those things that India has sort of stepped in in so many areas of uh, the Western world to fill those those gaps with being outsourced. And and again, you know, you're right. You know, there's a lot of facilities over there that have been uh, sorry the the, the the big players have already got facilities over there. We know that, you know, they've got the, the storage units over there. They've got the, the data centers over there. But essentially, who's going to go over there with the heavyweight training? I think that's what's really going to impact the market. And, and certainly, you know, like you say, bring India up to speed with all the training that's needed if they're going to fulfill their role as a, a, a real major service player in the cloud world, right? Yeah, I think they're going to have to invest themselves, you know, a lot of these things. I think the big companies are going to go in there and provide training, but obviously they're going to provide training around their technology, not cloud architecture, you know, systemic security and governance and some of the things we talked about on the show. And so the, um, the trainers in India need to step up and make sure that they're going to have the capabilities on hand to make, you know, take things to the next level. And it's not going to be specific clouds all the time. And so... If the cloud providers are coming in, they're just like software providers, they're, they're in essence going to kind of muddy up the water because um, what's needed now is the ability to do cloud computing architecture, security architecture, DevOps, moving into serverless computing, you know, um, uh, component-based development, container-based development, all these things that are people chomping at the bit to make it happen. Not necessarily the particular tactical cloud skills to, you know, take things to the next level. And I think that there has to be somebody who's designing this thing and planning this thing so those skill sets are going to be adopted at some time. They're going to be uh, transferred to people who need them. And right now, I don't see anybody who's planning this stuff out. I mean, the training companies are kind of working in an ad hoc way, in a very tactical way. And that's why I see, like I said, when I see, uh, you, know, you know, 2020, it's going to be 2019 in 30 days. Um, that's a year, you know, scale up 30%. I, I just don't have a lot of hope that it's going to happen in, in a way that will be successful um, or be um, overwhelmingly successful. I'm sure you're going to be able to scale up, but it's going to be somewhat shorter what the expectations are for the service industry in India. And I think they know it. I think the Indian, Indian-based, um, you know, consulting companies and service companies are in essence going to be able to, you know, trying to scale their business right now. And so they're scurrying as quickly as they can. They've done this before. You know, they've worked on the Hadoop-based stuff and the machine learning-based stuff. But the cloud problem, the ability to kind of understand all the skills you need to be successful in the cloud is, you know, probably, you know, 50 times more complex than any of those. And so it's going to take more training and more understanding and more, uh, you know, systemic-based changes in the way we think about things. And I don't think those are really kind of on anybody's radar screen right now. Yeah, so true, so true. And look, this moves us on nicely to your top three tips, Dave, uh, if you uh, be good enough to share. I, I'm sure we've uh, we've got some left to share, haven't we? There's three more left somewhere. You got it. Well, number one, consider cloud training as training to the masses. And we got to remember that 
cloud training needs to scale, and so we have to have some way to, in essence, allow it to scale. So the ability to automate training, the ability to use video-based training, the ability to use technology-based training, things like that, has to be exploited. And so if we're tying this to human beings, we're standing in front of the classes of people, that won't work. If I, if I hear that, I just think immediately that's going to be unsuccessful. Uh, it's not going to be consistent. We're not going to necessarily get the right skills in front of the people who take them to the next level. We need to get the experienced experts in front of them, but do so in a virtual way. We're in allowing these people to replicate themselves across multiple people who are taking the, cla the classes. And by the way, at their pace, not necessarily the pace of a class. Consider, you know, multi-year training planning. And so we have to understand that this is about a journey, not necessarily a sprint to 2020. As we keep talking about, this is about looking at what's going to be important in the next five years, 10 years, and making sure we put the training in place to make that happen. I know it sounds like a broken record, but I haven't seen too many, um, you know, companies, countries, um, you know, towns do this in a way that, that can be successful because we're not necessarily looking at this as a long-term thing. We have a tendency to want to solve a tactical problem, get everybody trained up, and then suddenly we have amnesia about what we need to do next. Uh, again, continuously improve. So you need to build to ability, the ability to, in essence, change things and do things faster, um, but also make sure that you're able to improve the processes as you go along. So the classes should be always better than the ones you took before and then always better than the one you took before that. And I think the ability to kind of get into that mindset is gonna be a huge um, you know, kind of culture shift for a lot of you know, colleges, universities, training companies, even people, but we gotta be able to update these things as we go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you're, you're so right. That ongoing training, making sure that it is as uh, up to speed as possible and it's around the, the, the learning curve of the student as opposed to they're just on a course for the sake of being on the course. Uh, I think if, you, if you've got these, those dynamics correct and certainly for scaling up and we've spoken about these similar principles for you know other training within I think it was Malaysia or Indonesia or somewhere like that there was the, those issues of making sure that you know people could access the courses where they didn't have to turn up to the course but everything was online and you know the courses were on point and I think that's really yeah very important points there Dave thanks for thanks for sharing those three points as always that that's uh, awesome. It's always a pleasure, man. Happy 50th. Happy 50th. Yes. Congratulations, sir. We've reached the big 5.0 training show. It's been awesome. And look, Dave, thank you so much for being part of the project. It's, uh, it's great to have you on. It's always great to be here. I'll uh, let you know what happened at reInvent next week. Yep. Look forward to that. Maybe we could do a reInvent special next week or something uh, with uh, your highlights of the show or whatever i don't know if you want to um what the after show parties were like or something um i guess what do you think sure we can what happens in vegas happens way after my bedtime so i'm not going to give you the after party uh, uh view okay well we'll do the we'll do the clean version and hypothet hypothetically think about what happened when you went to bed <laughs> yeah Excellent. Well, you know, again, thanks for thanks for being part of the show, Dave. And look, thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching the fiftieth training show. Uh, it's been it's been great. It's been quite a journey, and I think I've said a similar thing on each show. But you know, that five zero has come around exceptionally fast, and we've covered some great content. Had some great special guests as well, which we're, we're always thankful for the guests coming on. Um, and yeah, there's some great special guests lined up for the new year as well. Uh, it's just it's it's so challenging sometimes to get everyone's diaries together because uh, I'm in Australia. Dave's obviously on the East Coast in the US. So it's just making sure everyone's diaries reaches. So, uh, you know, it's a shame we can't have guests every week or every other week or something. But we're getting there and it's uh, there's a lot of conferences coming up. So bear with us because there are some great guests coming up uh, and some great specials coming up as well well so they're, they're actually niching down into some special shows and not just the ones we do at the moment so yeah some really exciting things coming on uh, you can get David on Twitter so you reach out to him on Twitter which is at David Linthicum uh, I'm on Twitter as well so happy to reach out to me on at Nelson underscore Hilliard we're on Facebook Instagram uh, Twitter YouTube all those social media platforms so uh, always great to connect and uh, yeah join the conversation and stuff like that um, and yet yeah, David writes some great blogs as well and in the description box are all the links to everything including the blog so you, you can subscribe to just the blogs if you want to uh, but also subscribe to the YouTube channel 
and click the notification bell so you uh, you keep up to date with all the shows uh, when they're released and the other things that are happening as well. So look, you know, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for being part of the uh, the Nelson Hilliard Cloud Computing Shows Big Five O uh, collection of shows this week. It's been uh, yeah, it's been really awesome. So thanks for watching, everyone. Until next week. <laughs>